Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Brent Hoskins. I serve as Executive Director of the Business Technology Association, and I'd like to welcome you to this special webinar previewing the BTA Strategic Sales Semester, which will begin on January 22nd. Uh, today, this preview webinar will be led by Mitch Morgan and Chris Rhine, the, the instructors for this 13-session online training program. They're both partners in Growth Achievement Partners. Now, if you have questions along the way, uh, you can type them in using your GoToWebinar dashboard there on your screen, and I'll be glad to read those aloud to uh, Chris and Mitch to address at the end of the webinar. So with that, I will first turn it over to Chris. Chris? Yeah, great. Thanks, Brent. And let me just confirm, you can still hear me? Yes. All right, terrific. We'll keep going then. Um, thank you for, for, for having us today, uh, Brent, DTA, um, you, you know, your support of this strategic sales semester, and in particular, um, the idea around this general information session. Um, we, we, had a, we had great feedback and a phenomenal turnout when we did this uh, last year at about this time. We kicked off in February of last year, and lots of people um, in the feedback we got, they said, boy, it was, it was what we thought it was going to be, but plus a lot more, and um, it would have maybe been interesting to have a general information session call in advance to to give people some more clarity because um, even some of the people that missed attending the class gave us some feedback and said, boy, had I known that that was everything that was included, we probably would have signed up. So thanks for your openness to have a bit of a, of a unique seminar here. This isn't a building your business seminar. We intend to take maybe 30 minutes today to give an overview and some more detail on what this strategic sales semester is and provide you, the audience, uh, an opportunity to ask some questions, maybe to fill in some blanks to ensure it's the right thing for your your dealership and your reps and your strategic direction. And we'd love to support you on it and then um, ultimately get you signed up and, and have you participate. We think there's a lot of valuable content here. It's very timely. Um, again, we got great feedback from the uh, over 120 participants we had on, on the last session and looking forward to even take some of the lessons learned and, and apply them to this one. So, um, so this um, is, me and Mitch on an online class and, and a webinar in particular, you don't always get to see us versus classroom training. Um, but this is us and, and looking at our pictures, you, you might think it's a good thing that you don't have to deal with us. But, uh, but this, is, this is us and we've, we've been in and around and supportive of and been supported by the BTA for, for quite some time. In fact, Mitch and I have, have worked together for a while and we formed Growth Achievement Partners together way back in 2010 and, and Mitch was doing work on behalf of, of the BTA before that. And, and actually the, the, when it was NAMDA, uh, Mitch, and Mitch and Mitch's company formed the first connectivity training for office equipment dealers way, way back in the day when it was going from, uh, from analog to digital. So we've got a, a long legacy that we're very, very proud of and participating with and supporting BTA, um, BTA dealers. Um, we'd like to thank you attendees for, for joining us today, uh, allowing us to take a little bit of time maybe to interrupt your last minute Christmas shopping or, or certainly things that you're trying to do towards the end of the month and the end of the year. And especially with the uh, titles of the attendees that we've got here, this is certainly a very senior and executive um, level crowd here. And we want to make sure that, that your time is, is well spent and you get a good understanding about what this course offers. And, and what this course offers, um, we'll kind of build out a slide and I'm going to anticipate that most people are on the webinar, but there could be some people audio only. So I'll seek to explain, but not be redundant. Um, this is web-based training and um, boy, again, in that, you know, 2009, 10 to today relationship with DTA, we've done a lot of classroom training and we've actually done this course where we've historically done it um, in a training room, you know, classroom setting, face-to-face, -face, eyeball to eyeball, day and a half. And, again, have, have always gotten great feedback, but some of the feedback that we've gotten from people is, you know, it's an awful lot to take in in a, in a day and a half, and we wish we maybe had more time to consume it and implement it. And we've also heard that, you know, I couldn't send my whole team, but I wish I could have had my whole team participate. So we started talking about this with Brent and, and BTA leadership and training and education group over a year ago and said, you know, let, let's put something web-based together that makes sense for the community and, and let's see what it what it looks like and how we can deliver it. Web-based training, as, as you attendees on the phone are, are familiar, is increasing. It's increasingly effective. We think we've added some things to it that, that have made it very nice, interactive, and consumable. So let's get into what this thing is, is all about. Um, this is a strategic sales evolution, strategic sales course. And we're going to seek to support your team and your leadership, um, your sales leadership in implementing a 
time-tested repeatable process that is allowing other office equipment dealers to expand and broaden opportunities and continue to sell boxes where appropriate, but continue to elevate and, and position and, and sell other products and services as appropriate as well. And um, we've been doing this for a long time. Mitch and I are exclusively doing the training in this. Whoops, I'm not sure how that changed, Brent, but that was interesting. I'll change that back. Um, we've got a gremlin work in here, but, um, but this is what the course is all about. So it's going to be um, web-based training. Since the six-month course, we'll do a call every other Monday. We'll do the, there'll be 45 minutes worth of content and 15 minutes worth of open mic Q&A. It's actually something that we added um, through the last course. Um, we were providing great content and good feedback and some people asked if we could do a Q&A at the end. So instead of keeping people over the hour, um, we're going to make sure that the content each, each one of the sessions is 45 minutes and then 15 minutes of Q&A. Um, so we'll be delivering that in an interactive session, not unlike this. We'll have slideware that we'll go through. Mitch and I will toggle back and forth, um, you know, training on the, the, the curriculum and the content, and then we'll open it up. We'll use chat, and, and it's very interactive, and it works It works very, very well. Mitch and I uh, feel like we're pretty engaging. We, we can talk specifically to the to the teams. We're pretty relevant, and, and we can certainly hold a group for, for 45 minutes and then, and then Q&A. We're also going to make sure we're supporting the sales managers and materials, kind of toggling over there to the right. Sales managers and leadership um, get visibility to content one week in advance so they know what we're going to be training the team on. In fact, the first call we do is, is a deeper dive than this sales leadership call where they get a really good understanding of what we're going to cover. We want to make sure we keep the sales leaders out in front. We don't want to ever have them sitting in a position where they say, you know, what's GAP going to be covering today or is this going to be relevant and have them say, I don't know. We work really hard um, to make sure that, that that they're familiar and we're supporting in their direction and they understand where we're going. Um, we have an app that you will have access to that will um, not only house the, the sessions, but in particular, what we call applets. Um, there will be training modules and, you know, video, audio video that will support the content that we just went through. So a, a rep can go through and access, access that in real time. Let's say we're talking about positioning, um, I don't know, business process optimization, or we're talking about how to work through your sponsor or position all that you sell or position the strategic sales process we're going to show you. We will have some slideware that supports that as well as audio from either Mitch or me that the rep can look at on, on either an Android or, or an iOS device in real time as often as they want as they're going into an appointment. Sales leaders can use it. Um, you know, to further support training and implementation. So you'll have access to an app. Um, there's going to be a collaboration site that we have through through Yammer, which is kind of like a LinkedIn or a Facebook, but it's more business applicable where we will store materials. We'll have an, an online forum, if you will, for people to be able to ask questions of each other in the group, some really good best practice sharing those types of things. Um, so you probably have time to read the slide. We've got price per team here and we, and we think it's very easy and consumable so what you see here is, is kind of per dealership not per rep if you have one to five reps that are going to be participating it's 250 a month and if you have six to ten it's 500 and if you have ten or four or ten or more reps call Mitch or me and we'll discuss kind of volume pricing if you will but we really try to make this this very very affordable and, and easy to consume for you and your team so so that's essentially what we're going to be delivering and, and the things that go with it the scheduling, as I mentioned, every two weeks, 12 sessions in total. The first one's going to be January 22nd, 11 o'clock Central Time. Um, again, 45 minutes of content and 15 minutes of Q&A. The last session will be on 625. In looking through um, the calendar, I don't think we conflict with, like, the Memorial Day holiday. We're going to stop before 4th of July, so there shouldn't be any, you know, federally observed or dealership observed uh, holidays that are going to fall on a Monday. If there are, we'll make a, a change, but we don't think there are. Uh, again, session content will be provided to sales leadership in advance, and the sessions will always be recorded and available through Yammer. So if you have reps that, you know, miss or you have a team meeting, uh, you know, that, that conflicts, you can always go to the recorded session. We're available to help in between as well. So um, it'll all be archived. It's not a one time we conduct it. And if you miss it, too bad. You'll, you'll have opportunities to revisit or, or consume at a different time. Um, without going into tremendous detail, this is the sales process that we're going to be training and supporting your teams on and the implementation of this. Um, 
it's repeatable, it's incredibly effective, it anticipates the steps that you need to take in a typical sales process. Um, each one of the boxes that you see um, is, is a step in the sales process, but not necessarily a separate appointment. Um, but within each, each box, there are specific actions and goals and supplemental tools and talk tracks that can be used. Um, starts typically at the account contact level. We might be at the executive decision maker level, but we spell it out here in case we're not and or even if we are to let uh, let somebody know that we're going to kind of elevate the conversation to make sure we're we're getting business goals and objectives and making sure we understand what's what's important to the business that's driving decisions outside just maybe making a an equipment purchase. Um, and then we show a mutual decision where we can do an equipment evaluation, which is, you know, pretty, pretty traditional. Or if you see where it goes down to the process improvement team, the last box in the last swim lane there, where we would kick off additional processes within the process. So if we're going to do a deeper dive into workflow, what we call business process optimization document management, you would be able to easily insert with some of our best practices your process within a process for doing a study or an evaluation in there. Maybe you're getting specialists involved. There's other tasks and procedures that go into that. You could insert managed print services in there, manage network services, IT services, um, production, high volume, facilities management. And as we go through the course, we'll be talking about best practices and talk tracks for you to be able to put all of that in. Uh, in either case, whether you're doing those studies for additional you know, products and services or traditional equipment upgrade, you'll certainly come back to present findings, um, which is proposal-esque, and then you show out ongoing account management review. So we'll be taking the team through this. Um, it is very, very interactive with the, the, the prospect or the suspect or the, the, the potential customer. And again, we go through tools and best practices to help repeat and streamline this and it becomes incredibly effective, uh, not only to increase deals and close ratios, but to also further develop, you know, the team and the sales leadership. You know, oftentimes, you know, we can't have a situation where we've got four or five reps or more and four or five different sales processes or more, or we shouldn't need to have a different sales process necessarily for everything you sell. There's processes within the process, but it really helps your dealership get to a level of effectiveness and repeatability as well, whether it's training and onboarding new reps or helping transition more traditional reps and whether it's old dogs, new tricks or whatever analogies you use, but it's applicable for everybody. We've had first day people and industry veterans say that this is the best repeatable process they've had for being able to broaden their, their and their customers' perspectives on what you deliver and, and, and frankly, close new deals. Um, this is something that ultimately should be branded for you. Um, there's just a couple of examples here about other dealerships we've historically worked with. And you turn this into your interactive tool to be able to describe to customers the way in which you work, the way in which you work a sales process, or we call it a discovery process, and the way in which you get to making recommendations and then hopefully closing deals and, and onboarding clients. So that's the process that we're going to take people through and all the iterations of tools and things that, that go through it. So for a little bit of perspective on that and how and why that's relevant and important, it's, it's, you know, we might have three goals, you might have 15 goals, but if we look, there's five goals you might be thinking about for your sales team today. And um, again, you at an individual level might have some, some different things, but these are pretty universal. We'd like the sales team to drive more margin. Um, we'd like them to be able to differentiate in an increasingly complex world where differentiation is, is, is becoming more and more difficult, especially the things that you're going to differentiate on. We have a broader and need to be able to position a broader, more sophisticated solution set than we ever have before, but where appropriate. Not for every deal. It shouldn't be for every deal. How do we help reps and customers even understand where and when and how it's appropriate to be looking at more sophisticated solutions? Or do we just do the box upgrade now and revisit some of these other things later? Or if we only go in looking at the box upgrade, are we not differentiating enough or missing an opportunity and we need to go in with a little broader solution set or something more solutions driven? Helping your team and your customers arrive at the appropriate position, you know, decision through the sales process is an, incredi an increasingly critical skill. Certainly driving more equipment revenue. We don't want anybody on the phone to think that, that when we go through this training, we want to sell less equipment in favor of more solutions. In fact, 
We want to sell more equipment. Our clients have found that they've sold more equipment. Participants find that they sell more equipment. And oftentimes it's because we're either positioning more solutions or we're adding solutions onto the equipment and we're driving margin and differentiating. So we're not going to have anybody on the phone sell less boxes. Um, we want to sell more of them. We're going to get into net new. Um, we're going to have, in some cases, the, the, the tail wagging the dog. Maybe it's your ability to position some of these newer services like managed IT that opens up an office equipment deal, so on and so forth. So we're going to continue to drive more equipment revenue. And then we got to help reps get better. Um, increasingly sophisticated world, pace of change is, is crazy. Um, and if the pace of change outside is greater than the pace of change inside, you're in trouble. And so are individual reps. And so individual development and relevance is critical. It's what Mitch and I hear from our consulting clients all the time when they ask us to get in front of their sales team. It's to help them with updated talk tracks and approaches that are going to help them maintain relevance and close more business. So those are the five goals for the sales team. And kind of as it relates to 2018, um, here's what we know. Here's what we hear. We're in front of a lot of reps. Um, and we're in front of reps every day. We're in both ends and we're both in relevant. And what we would tell you is your sales reps generally have the desire and willingness to sell expanded technology offerings to your customers and, and prospects, but they don't always have a process or they might not have rep confidence or they might not, you know, be as comfortable in their ability to do this or your ability to deliver those services, frankly. And, and, and sometimes it has more to do with skill and less to do with will. Now, granted, again, we fully recognize that there's an industry full of bullpen reps who maybe don't want to change um and maybe they don't have to but for the most part we see certainly greater than 51 percent there is a desire and willingness because they recognize they need to do it to be able to make the money they've made before or make more going forward so there's some general willingness competition is increasing here your traditional competitors in many of your markets are moving forward or have moved forward and in some cases are outflanking you um, maybe that's why some of you are on the call um, we don't necessarily know who's on the call. Brent does. <laughs> but, um, you know, maybe you're here be, be, because you say, hey, you know, I've been trying to get my team to do this and we're at a bit of a competitive disadvantage and we're, we're seeing these things start to happen and we've got to address them. Um, as we mentioned, relevance is important. Um, getting to the owner and the C-level. This is something that we see, again, at an increasing rate, especially on the managed IT services side. What we're talking to clients about and what they're telling us about in the deals that they're closing and the deals that Mitch and I are involved in in closing is technology is increasingly strategic to organizations. They're being disrupted positively and negatively and, and technology in its broadest scope up to and including things that put dots on paper, but going beyond that is no longer just operational. In many cases, it has to run like a utility, but it's a strategic differentiator. It's something that needs to drive efficiency and productivity. It's something that businesses are seeking to achieve competitive advantage. And these decisions, as it relates to technology and the increasing sophistication of our copier, frankly, and the things that it can do and the, the workflows and the business applications that it can impact, are moving beyond just purchasing and are moving up to additional departments and or senior level people. Again, look at the senior level people that are participating today. Um, it's, it, 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 it's evident, all right? Um, you're probably seeing it in your own business as well. Technology offerings aren't for every account, as I mentioned, but they need to continue driving equipment revenue during the transition, but also have their eyes open for other opportunities. and. Reps are good at selling, and we want to give them new skills to, to help make sure that they can continue to sell. Um, and then we, we recognize, as we mentioned before, oftentimes your sales leadership um, really needs some support as well. Many sales leaders are sales leaders because they were good reps, but now we're asking them to maybe lead teams and sell products and services that they personally never sold. That's a challenging position for a sales manager to be in. Um, they're best at being able to help their reps close deals and if they're being asked to close deals that they shouldn't participate in, that's difficult for them. So that's why Mitch and I make sure we stay out in front and have a whole supplemental set of materials to help your, your sales leadership, your sales management transition and stay one step ahead of the team. So graphically, this is what we're going to help your teams do because it's what they need to do today. They need to walk and chew gum. They need to be able to slam boxes, sell equipment, but go deeper and wider, whether that's adding solutions, leading with solutions, differentiating with solutions. And every time I say solutions, I've got my air quotes up that you can't see, but it's outcomes, right? That's really what we're talking about. This should be strategic outcome selling as opposed to strategic solution selling, but 
increasingly we're selling outcomes and helping the rep have a better understanding of where to apply and how to be conversant in talking to businesses about helping them achieve desired outcomes that are increasingly technology driven is what this course is all about. So um, Mitch, let's maybe transition to you for a little bit. I've droned on long enough and the benefit of this class is that they get to hear from two people. So why don't you talk to the crowd about how we help their reps transition. Yeah, thanks Chris and, and well done as usual. Um, the, uh, the slide that you see in front of you is um, thanks to Chris and my good friend, Mike Reardon. Um, for those of you that, that know Mike, um, know that the asking triangle added to the skills and knowledge is really an important element of development, um, not just for sales reps, but for everybody. Um, and we're in a we're in a in a world where knowledge is needing to be replenished on a consistent and repeating basis. And um, obviously, um, sales development is is important. Um, the, the, the triangle itself um, and, and, the, and the formula around it is that. First, we want to acquire knowledge, um, new knowledge for a lot uh, of the reps. And then we want to um, have them demonstrate a positive attitude or approach to new processes that we built. And then um, we want to build skills through repetition and demonstration of that. Um, one of the challenges that Chris and I have had with the traditional instructor-led model, um, which has been effective, um, is that it's really, really difficult, as Chris mentioned, for a sales executive to go to a one and a half day training class and then be able to go to a nine o'clock appointment the next day and be able to demonstrate some of these new capabilities, some of these new skills, and some of the new knowledge that they acquire. Um, and one of the benefits we think um, this program offers, and last year we had, as Chris mentioned, about 140 students going through the class, including uh, US and Australia. So we really got a good census and a good population with it. And um, one of the benefits is in between the class sessions themselves, students are encouraged and asked to go out there and road test some of these concepts and content um, supported by their sales management and also inclusive of, of a sales meeting type of, uh, of an approach with regard to a sales meeting in a box. And so we really have found that over a period of time, it's a better way to implement new skills and new strategies and new structure. Um, and, and, and we're excited to be bringing the, the, the class back out again. Um, I think on this, one of the original slides, I just wanted to make clear, I think it's probably clear to everyone, but uh, when we talk about the price of the class of $250 and $500, that's for your entire dealership. That's for the entire sales team. That's not per person. Um, so that's it's important for you to, to understand that in the event that you don't. Um, so, so moving from that to the sales equation, and, and this is a slide that, that Chris likes um, a lot on Money Guy slide. Um, and, and the equation is, Knowledge plus attitude, which is what we're building through the class, time skills equals sales confidence. And the reason why it's time skills is that um, it's a repetitive process. And each time you do it, you get a little bit better at it, you get a little bit more knowledgeable at it, and it becomes a little bit more of a comfortable type of an environment. And that's what we're seeking. We're seeking to have your sales reps, your sales executive, have what we call sales confidence. Uh, we all know it, we've all had it. It's when deals come in bunches, and it's when we walk into uh, a prospect's office, and we know that we've got the best solution and the best process for being able to arrive at it. So, um, on the next slide, um, we talk about what is each thing. Um, three things. Um, first, it's a philosophy, um, and, and we really focus hard on helping customers solve their business problems. We focus hard on helping them to achieve their business goals. A big part of the course is identification of business goals. Companies spend money to achieve business goals, but if it doesn't align with one of their business goals, chances are pretty good they're not going to spend time and money on it. Um, it also aligns with how buyers buy. We've done a lot of these, um, and we've spent a lot of time doing what we call deal autopsies, where we go step to step to step in terms of from the very first meeting to the actual closing and implementation, exactly how the process works, and we've aligned the sales process to meet with how buyers buy. Um, it's a map, um, and Chris mentioned that one of the things that we're going to ask you to do should you attend the class is build your own discovery process um, with your own color logo look and feel, um, laminate it, uh, give it to the sales reps. And we're going to teach them how to demonstrate to the customer the step-by-step -step process that we follow. And the reality of it is they will follow a process because chances are, in many cases, they don't know how to buy these solutions-based, software-based offerings any better sometimes if we know how to sell them and, and 
end-to-end map is something that's beneficial for both parties. It also serves to demonstrate that we've done this before, this isn't our first deal that we're taking this through, and it significantly increases the discussion. Um, and it's a methodology. Um, every box that you see on that discovery process um, has tools, has techniques, has job aids, has talk tracks, and has a methodology associated with them. And uh, we do seek to accelerate through the sales process through this refined methodology. Um, about four years ago, we did a, a survey uh, with the BTA um, in a building my business um, webinar that Brett was nice enough to have us participate in. And we asked a pretty good sized crowd at the time uh, about strategic or solution sales. And, and we asked them a lot of questions, but one of those questions that's up on the screen was, what's the impact of a single time-tested strategic solution sales process to your business? Um, and at the time, 84% said it was either important or critical to their business. Um, I, I would imagine that that number probably hasn't changed significantly. Um, a lot of dealerships have moved forward with these kinds of processes um, and, and have found that to be beneficial to their business. We certainly hope you will as well. Um, so as we think about stage uh, of sales development, in particular for our industry, and as Chris mentioned, um, we've been literally in front of thousands of office equipment uh, sales executives, um, and it, it's been all the way from this is my first day on the job to I've been a million dollar producer for 10 years in a row and everything in between. And we've been really eyeball to eyeball with them as well as with our client group on these on these strategies and this structure. And if you think about it, if you've got a historical perspective like Chris and I do on the industry, it, it, it kind of has started with stage one, which is equipment. Um, not moving away from that. In fact, as Chris mentioned, we want to do more of that. Um, and that's focused on upgrades and net new. And there's definitely sales methodologies that are associated with that. Um, from there, we move into workflow, and uh, as, as you know, as Chris and I know, um, these, these devices have gotten very elegant with regard to the built-in software and the adjacent software that uh, provide for enhanced workflow capabilities. Um, it's important for reps to be able to sell those solutions to be bundled in with the equipment. It's going to be a big part of this class that we train on to enhance the equipment margin, increase the, the revenue per deal, and uh, solve the customer business problems, as we mentioned. Um, then we move into the area of business process optimization. Um, and we have some very specific uh, tools to, to support the BPO area, which is a little bit more document management intensive, focused on, in addition to workflow, business processes. And as you know, uh, from the time the door opens every morning to the time it closes at night, every business is a series of business processes to achieve its objectives. And many companies have business processes that weren't necessarily optimized in today's environment. Um, then we move up to strategy, and um, in particular around managed IT services, um, we, we help our clients and students to develop um, technology roadmaps, become trusted advisors to help the clients to be able to um, implement technology that's strategic in nature and helps them to accomplish their business objectives, and those tend to be very consulting-led types of activities. So we cover this waterfront in the class and provide the content to help students streamline their way through. Uh, another way to look at, at, at that same uh, graph, if you will, um, is, is moving out from the, the equipment. And, and, and the components of what has historically uh, been the success factors for an account executive have been those five items that you see on the screen. Um, having really good service, which your organizations do, um, selling the equipment on a monthly payment basis, um, featuring and focusing in on the equipment type that is best for the customer and focusing in on the manufacturer that you sell for. Um, developing a really good prospecting system and obviously developing closing systems. Those five elements have really paved the way for a lot of success for a lot of office equipment account executives in the past. But we're finding we're needing to move up the curve. And we move up to that second layer, which is around scan and capture, around some basic document management capabilities, print management, perhaps um, in the area of, 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 of managed print services, mobility and remote print, cost control and recovery. Then we move into some of the advanced offerings, which include BPO, as I mentioned before, managed services, cloud services, and technology planning services. And when, when the reason that we have the focus for stage two for here and now graphic in there is that oftentimes what dealerships do is they kind of separate their activities between core equipment, and then try and step over and cross the chasm into PTO managed services and cloud services, and there's a missing layer, a missing link that we think provides
provides lots of opportunities around scan and capture, document management, some of the enhancements that we can provide to the whole print environment. So that's, that's a real important designation. It's a really important component to the, to the, to the class. And it's, and it's a great way, as Chris mentioned, to drive more equipment sales through taking the strategic solutions approach. So um, what you see in front of you and what we've shown you is really a lot of the core concepts of the class. And we certainly hope that you'll you'll find it important enough in 2018 for you to take that journey with us. So Chris, tell us about the journey, if you will. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mitch. And I, I'd, I'd like to take a, a moment here. I'd like to thank Mitch for being a good business partner and, and joining us today. Um, given the challenging travel day uh, Mitch has had, um, uh, it would have been easy for him to not participate. He's, he's clearly mobile, but, but but we thought it was important enough to, that you heard from both of us as, as we were kicking off the class. When we do these, um, we're not mobile. We're at our desks. Um, we've got solid audio quality. In fact, um, we only had one about two minute issue last year with GoToMeeting and a little bit of a of, of an issue that the go to webinar um, session had, had 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 but mitch thanks for joining us today and when you get to where you're going to have, have a pale ale on me and, and and finally relax for the day so um so the journey um yeah reps often see strategic sales as something that they need to do or maybe even the, the dealership looks at as a as a someday kind of thing and um it, someday has happened so we're not making the news we're just reporting it and it's here and um We've got to address it, and, and two things need to happen to, to, to make it happen. Um, we need to make it a priority, and, and we need to make it easy. Um, sometimes these things don't happen because they're not a priority, and it's hard, and it requires change, and they flip back into the old habits, especially if they don't have tools and a support mechanism for them to be effective, which is what this class delivers. And these sessions are about helping them, you know, achieve the current business activities, which is selling equipment and hitting quota and finding net new and retaining customers and making friends and influencing people, but also working towards a, you know, a broader sales opportunity to elevate the dealership, elevate the, you know, the, the, the visibility to what you guys and, and, and what your dealerships can provide and, and the opportunities that are, that are out there. Um, it starts with a rep assessment. Um, what we'll do in, in advance between when we do the, the, the leadership kickoff and, and the first communication for the rep sometime around the week of January 8th was we'll send out a, a self-assessment and we'll ask them to assess themselves around um, uh, 12 key areas. And there's you know three questions around probing for pain and three questions around solution development and uh, ongoing account management and expansion and generating activity, just, just like you see here. And um, you'd be shocked on, how transparent they are and how honest they are, especially when they're getting signed up for a class where they don't know the consultants, but they know that they're here to help. And um, here's an example of what it is. It's Excel-based, it's easy, but, but we kind of define what we mean by these levels. And they send us the grades back, and, and we do it for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we do it to help you better measure and understand, and the sales leadership better measure and understand where the reps personally see themselves as needing support. And then number two, we aggregate the class and we look to see to make sure that we're kind of pointed in the right direction based on what the field is hearing and seeing and these things aggregate pretty similarly but we'll be able to point to it and say hey you know 42 of you said that you know this area is an area for you so when we cover this area today make sure if you give yourself a c or d on this that you're really paying attention here's an area that can really help so We've got some data um, to be able to point to individuals and the collective whole as well. So, so that's what we'll do around reps assessment. So here's next steps and some Q&A. And Brent, I don't know if you have some questions, but we put a couple of frequently asked ones. So let's talk about kind of next steps in Q&A. So visit the BTA website and get registered, get signed up. Um, you'll be looking for an email from us. Um, you know, we'll, we'll confirm it. We'll make sure that you get signed up and we get your, your roster in on the Amherst site and things like that. But on January 8th is when we'll send that intro out to the assessment and your teams and talk a little bit about sales leadership to, to be having the pre-call. But the first call starts, as Brent mentioned, on the 22nd. So we've got some time in between when that when that happens. Um, so here's some frequently asked questions. If I have a rep start later in the year, can they still join? Absolutely. Be happy to have them. In fact, they'll have an opportunity to catch up, which is the second question. If we miss a session, whether it's a team misses a session or an individual misses a session, how do we catch up? We'll archive these. So as soon as the WebEx is done, 
it takes us about 15 minutes to upload the video or the, the audio and the video because that takes a little bit of time, but it gets updated to the to the Yammer collaboration site. And then everybody that, that, that has access, which would be all the attendees, can click on that as their leisure, watch the, you know, the PowerPoint, just like somebody could record or watch the recorded PowerPoint here today. You can do it repeatedly. If you've got a new rep or somebody that was out, they can catch up. Um, if you need additional Chris, help. To, to interrupt, yes. I, I apologize. And I hope this is the background is not too bad. But um, one of the real benefits that I think the participants get is they're able to establish their own library. Um, um, this, these documents and these audio files don't stay on Yammer. Um, you can download them, and it, and it becomes a way in which you can tell, you can train future reps within your organization. So it becomes your intellectual property and your materials that you can use for consistency going forward within the dealership. Yep, that's great. Thanks, Mitch. Um, you know, we, we're asked, uh, you know, if, if we need additional help, are we available? Of course we are, a couple of ways. Um, let's say that, you know, there's an upcoming session and the sales leader says, hey, I want to make sure I understand this specifically for my dealership. Maybe we got something a little bit unique. We're happy to hop on a call. Or maybe post a, a, you know, a session, somebody said, hey, we had some really spirited debate or conversation as a team about this, and we didn't talk about this today. I'll, I'll give you an aside. The way we recommend that you do this, if you're, if you're able, is have it be the Monday team meeting. Have the sales leader and the team participate in a conference room together. It's great for the sales leader to be able to, you know, see the visual facial expressions on the reps or to be able to say, hey, let's earmark that for a future conversation uh, or let's have a conversation about it. But in the additional help, let's say somebody said, hey, you know, we had a conversation about that and we maybe have a little bit, you know, we've got two sides of the coin here we're, we're thinking about. Can you help give us a little bit more insight or can you tell us how we're going to address this later or maybe we've got an active deal those types of things so we're always available for help by phone or email and then we've even had some others where they said hey you know in some of these other processes within the process um managed it services or the business process optimization you know we really need some additional help there um you know, we, we, we'd like to have you guys come in and do a deeper dive or, or build that out even further. And, and, you know, we do that as well. We can look at that as a project or, or something separate for you. But, but yes, um, we're, we're, we're in the business of helping you win and helping the BTA win. So we want to make sure that, that whatever we're doing is, is, is being positioned to be able to help you and your teams win. So, yes, we're available for additional help in a couple of different ways. And then as far as for today's call, um, you know, maybe your boss wasn't on and, and, you know, you want to set up another call to help close him or her on the deal, or maybe there was somebody else you'd like to have participate. Brent's going to take out or send out, um, you know, the recorded version. But if you've got some questions that are just specific or you said, hey, you know, I just want to fill in a couple blanks or, you know, my boss wasn't on, but I think she'd buy into this. And can we spend 10 or 15 minutes on the phone between now and the 22nd or now and January 1st or whatever? Absolutely. Again, we're, we're here to help. We, we hope this would help fill in some blanks, but it probably doesn't fill in all. It answered some questions, but maybe brought some others up. So, so we're here to be able to address those, um, whether it's on the time and the call today, or if you want to set something separately up for your dealership. So, so Brent, I think if there was any calls that came in on the chat, let's have you, you do those, and then we'll sign off and get these people back on their way. All right, very good. Chris and Mitch, we appreciate your uh, willingness to take some time out of day to tell us a little bit more about the strategic sales semester. Certainly here at BTA, we're very excited about this and we're very excited about the great level of participation the first time around uh, that we did this. This will be the second offering. Um, and really, in part, it came out of a survey of BTA that we did of our members asking how you best like education to delivered. And frankly, the overwhelming majority was online training for obvious reasons. It doesn't take people out of the field. It, it uh, saves certainly on travel costs, et cetera. Um, there have been a couple of questions that popped up on the screen, and, and you guys have addressed them, actually, as you went along. And I confirmed that with the attendees to make sure the question was addressed. Oh. But another one did <laughs> pop up here. It says... Um, can we get references? It says names at Applied Imaging, E.O. Johnson, or another RICO dealer who has been through the course. So, so I don't know if you've um, got some references. Sure. If you can, if, yeah, if you want to contact us directly, um, there might be some instances where, you know, we, we, 
we wouldn't maybe want to give a, a reference of somebody direct in your backyard. So if we just know who it came from, but we're we're happy to give some references. Absolutely. Okay. So right. if you want to reach out to us or, or Brent, however you're yeah. best handle that, but yeah, we're happy to do that. Right. The person who asked the question, I've got your name. I'll share that with Mitch and Chris, and they'll make sure they provide you references that aren't, you know, like you said, competitors. So. Um, I'm not seeing any other questions at this point. I will mention that if you're interested in more information than even you've seen here, at least what you've seen on the screen perhaps, you know, you go to the BTA website uh, and it's, of course our website's bta.org, but if you go to bta.org slash strategic sales, you will see some additional information, a little bit more maybe on the bios of our presenters uh, and also, you know, the, the means to register for the workshop. So. Um, Looking again to see if there are any other questions. Uh, seeing none, um, I, I will mention, as Chris mentioned a moment ago, that this webinar was recorded and uh, a link to that recording will be made available to all those who attended today. It'll probably be tomorrow before we get the link ready to go and you know all good, but we'll send that out to you. And if you wanna take a look again, or as Chris suggested, share that with someone else in your dealership, uh, you'd like to let them learn more about the strategic sales semester, they'll be able to just re-listen to this entire webinar and watch that. So um, someone else has just typed in, can we get this PowerPoint? And yes, when I send you a link um, to the webinar, I'll send you a PDF of the PowerPoint as well, and you'll have that. Um, Incidentally, this webinar and the PowerPoint will be posted on the BTA website um, on the, the page for st the strategic sales semester tomorrow as well. I'll send it to you, but, but know that it'll also be there uh, on the, the page I mentioned a moment ago, bta.org slash strategic sales. Uh, again, the PowerPoint and the webinar link will be there as well. So um, I don't see any other questions. Mitch, Chris, any other closing comments here? Other than, again, thank you everyone for your participation. We, we, we would look forward to you signing up and supporting you and your dealerships and hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday and uh, easy travel. Thanks for allowing us to present, Brent. All right, thank you, Mitch and Chris, and uh, look to hear from me, the, the attendees tomorrow via email. I'll give you this information. So with that, we certainly wish everyone a happy holiday season and uh, thank you for your uh, participation today, your membership in the association, and we'll talk down the road. Goodbye for now.